Hey you, we are back on Wake and Make Podcast. And if you're just joining us for the first time, my name is Molly and I'm here with my co-host Caroline. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome, welcome everyone. <laughs> we have um, exciting news today, right Caroline? Um, yeah, we have exciting news because we don't just have 15 friends, guys. We have 16 friends on the podcast. We are so excited. Sit back, listen up. If you're getting ready, tune in, whatever. If you're traveling, we have a really special guest on today. Her name is Megan and I've known Megan year and a half, two years. Time flies, really. I I don't know. I'm going to stop trying to attempt to remember how long I've known people because it never works out. But she uh, she is a really cool kid. I promise. She has a history. History. <laughs> Sorry. I do have. She has. <laughs> <laughs> she has a background in the medical field. But what's really cool about her is she is an acupuncturist. So she's going to answer all those questions that we have today and kind of dive into that and how we can use it for our own health benefit. So welcome, Megan, to the podcast officially. Thank you for yes, having welcome. me. Welcome. You welcome. are welcome. We're glad to have you. So let's just jump right in, I guess. You want to start by just telling us about yourself, give us a little background. My, my first career was nursing, and I've done that for about 30 years. I just became really disillusioned with Western medicine because they tend to just treat like the symptoms, like, oh, mm-hmm. you have this, let's give you a pill for this. And the way things are now, I mean, the, the pharmaceutical companies and the insurance companies really are dictating what the doctors can and cannot do. So you have that factor into it. So a lot of these people that are being treated, they're not, they're not treating the root cause. So they're going to keep taking pills or keep having surgeries or whatever. And so, you know, I went through some changes in my life. I was going through a divorce and I I felt like I really needed a change. It was kind of a motivation to just change up everything. So I ended up going to acupuncture school because when I was 18 years old, this was way before I even started nursing school. um, I used to work with racehorses and there was one particular horse who was, they paid a lot of money for him and he had something wrong with his hind end and they were trying this and they were trying that or they were trying a lot of different things and they resorted to acupuncture, like kind of as a last, a last ditch effort. And I just remember being there when they were inserting the acupuncture needles and was like, Oh, I wonder how this is going to go. But I mean, the horse got so relaxed, his eyelids were like half mass, the ears got heavy, and he just was totally, completely relaxed. Wow. And he went on to have a successful racing career after that. And I was just blown away because, you know, animals, they don't lie. They can't lie. So that kind of like stuck in the back of my head for a long time. So that when this, you know, this change in my life was happening, I thought, oh, yeah, I want to look into that. I want to learn more about it. So I went to acupuncture school. It's a three-year program. We had to do 2,500 hours in the clinic. We had to take three board exams to get licensed. It's a pretty rigorous program. And I was living in New Jersey at the time, and each state has different laws. So I, even though I was practicing as a nurse, I couldn't get licensed as an acupuncturist just because it's a state law, even though I was doing Mm. more invasive things in nursing. Mm -hmm. But so (laughs) that's why I ended up here in Tennessee from New Jersey. I'm starting to build my practice here and it acupuncture is just so amazing. It can help so many different things. It's not just for pain relief. It's got a wider spectrum than that. And um, I, I love it. It's my passion. It really helps people. It it allows the body to kind of heal itself. The body is designed to heal itself. It's just when you have an, a health issue, the body gets out of balance. So it's just a way of bringing the body back into balance so that natural healing can take place. I always like I know the story um, about the horse because I've I've talked to you about acupuncture before. 
But I always kind of forget about it until I hear you talk about acupuncture again. It just always amazes me because like you said, animals can't lie. And it's really cool to see how something like that not only can help and benefit us, but it can also benefit animals, which I think yeah, is really a lot cool. of vets use it for dogs, cats, horses, all kinds of things. So when you're studying, do you specify if you want to do humans or animals or do you learn it for like every being or is it just like up to you as you specialize? Well, again, in certain states, there are laws prohibiting yeah. the use of acupuncture unless you're a veterinarian here and mm-hmm. technically that's not the case. But um, yeah, it's it's based on the same theory that the body has these energy pathways going up mm-hmm. and down the body and they're connected to certain organs, organ systems, and they're all interrelated. So um, a lot of the meridians are the same in animals as they are in humans, and they have the same effects you're looking for. So, I mean, it pretty much once you know the the meridians and, and how they work and, and what the points do, then um, there's really no barrier there. And the meridians are those those pathways that you're yeah. talking about in our body. OK, yeah, it's very interesting. If you could define like this is acupuncture like what what would that definition be so acupuncture is using needles on specific points on specific meridians to Mm -hmm. unblock the pathways to allow the body to heal naturally when you when you insert a needle into an acupuncture point uh, circulation rushes to that area there's there's more um, perfusion oxygen oxygen can get to the area more quickly. Mm -hmm. Basically that, you know, that's the bare bones if I were going to define it. Sorry. I was writing a question because I am so excited for this. Like I, like I just have so many questions popping into my head. So, um, the big question that I think everyone learning about acupuncture, seeing acupuncture, does it hurt when it's happening? (laughs) Does it hurt? So that's like one of the biggest myths um, ever, because if you go to the doctor and you get an injection of something, Mm -hmm. they're probably using a needle that's a 25 gauge. So as you go up in numbers regarding to gauge of needles or width of Mm -hmm. the needles, the smaller, I mean, the larger the number, the smaller the needle is. So yeah, I use like 34 gauge, 36 gauge. I have some needles that are like 42, which is like the, wow. the hair. Wow. Yeah. But the average size, I guess what you could compare it to like a cat's whisker. Yeah. So it's very, very thin. Some people do feel an initial prick when the, when the needle is inserted, but a lot of times they don't feel it at all. Or mm-hmm. because, you know, if you, do get, you know, a painful sensation, they can be moved or smaller needles can be used. So it's not really, it's not like every single needle is ouch, ouch. It's not like, yeah, (laughs) Yeah. you know, there are different areas on the body, like the hands, the ankles, Mm -hmm. you know, where the skin is thinner, where you can use much thinner needles. So Mm -hmm. as much. I love knowing that number because I know as someone who has like multiple ear piercings, knowing that it is half the size, not even, it's way less than half the size of what I got my ears pierced with. That's like crazy to me. Yeah. Because that didn't really hurt at all. (laughs) I mean, they're so tiny. You can, you know, if I took one out, you could, they they bend, they're very flexible. They're very thin. So you mentioned it being a myth about people thinking, oh, acupuncture hurts so bad. Are there any other myths that you've had to overcome or kind of have to kind of help explain to your your patients? I mean, and I I think it's more common in this area just because it hasn't reached mainstream yet. I think we're behind here a little bit, but Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people hear acupuncture and they they think it's woo-woo, you know, folk medicine. But the truth is, it's been around for over 3,500 years. Um, It's been effective with many, many different conditions. So that's, that's, and and now doctors are referring their patients for acupuncture because with a lot of elderly patients or patients that don't want to do, you know, traditional methods for like pain relief, for example, it's Mm -hmm. less invasive. 
and you don't have all the side effects like you would if you were going for a cortisone injection or right. or something else. So I love what you said about the validity of folk uh, medicine and like how people don't believe that because that's so interesting to me because as an Appalachian and like growing up in Appalachia, I feel like there's all these dumb Southern things that... And it's like, we just believe these Southern things, but because it's like, like you said, it's, it's new, it's catching up here just because people don't believe it for that. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like, (laughs) that's crazy to me. (laughs) I'm like, I believe the Southern myth that coffee can clean my stovetop, but not that tiny needles can unblock my energy. This is crazy. (laughs) True, But I mean, if you grew up learning those things, I Mm -hmm. mean, there must be something to it because they must work. Right. Mm-hmm. So I think it's like the same parallel thing. Right. A lot of people hear acupuncture and they'd say, Oh, it's this woo woo. Yeah. You know, it's not gonna work. And you know, it's that's just not true. People in our area obviously should come see you, but if someone is listening to this and they're not in our area, um how would you recommend they go about searching for an acupuncturist? Like what should they look for certification wise to make sure that they're going to, you know, the right person for them? There's, um, there's a national board for acupuncture. It's N-C-C-A-O-M. And they can go onto that website and that gives a listing of all the practitioners who have passed all the board exams. They're legit, you know, they've all Mm -hmm. credentialed and everything. So that's the best place to go. Yeah. Um, to look for it. But if they know anybody else who have gotten acupuncture in this area, you know, I'm sure word of mouth is, is another good way. But if you, if you want somebody who's passed the boards and is, Mm -hmm. then, then you would go to nccaom.com. Org. That's a good question, Caroline. I'm glad you asked that. that. Listen, I'm interested in this. I'm very interested in this. Like, I don't think it's woo-woo medicine at all. I am such a believer in tradition, traditional medicine just because I also grew up in a medicine family. So, like, I see the overprescription in our area. I see those things very real. And I think that there is such validity to looking for other methods to treat yeah. your pain and your problems. <laughs> They, they listen to their doctors or they're afraid to venture away from their doctors. So, you know, they're, they're they could be on 10 different medications mm-hmm. and nobody it's sometimes it's common for the doctors not to check on how they've been doing on a medication they've been taking for a while, or they add one that might not interact with that one very well. So you run into that a lot. I love how you called out. Sorry, Molly. I just, I know you're about to say something. I love how you also mentioned the elderly community, because I feel like that is a community that honestly gets overprescribed at the drop of a hat for any issue. Um, and they're the most hesitant to seek out new methods of fixing their pain because that's, they just are used to trusting doctors. So yeah. I love that comment as well. <laughs> and the, and that mindset is, is difficult to get them to change. So yeah. Yeah. You know, it's a battle from both sides. I went to one of your informational sessions. I don't really know what you call those. (laughs) And you talked about how dental work can play a role in the toxins in your body. Will you kind of share about that? Cause I'm so excited for Caroline to hear this. Sure. So (laughs) I've been taking a lot of courses from a professor that taught me at my school, but he's, he's branched off. He's getting his doctorate. He's studied with a lot of different types of people. And his dad is a holistic dentist. So he has been incorporating dental into causes of disease. And his theory is that 95% of all disease comes from the mouth. And yeah, 95%. Okay. And it's, you know, because when you think about it, you know, if you have a wound or an infection somewhere, you, you treat it, it heals, you're good. But if you have an abscess in your tooth, doc, dentist wants to do a root canal. So what do they do? Mm-hmm. They, they drill down the root of the tooth. Hopefully they get it, all the bacteria out. Um, but a lot of times that's impossible because it's such a, a small area, Mm -hmm. not able to get it out. And then what do they do? They fill it up with a filling. 
And so that bacteria is still in your tooth. And what happens is it starts producing toxins and which actually leak through the tooth in, and leak through the bone, go into the bloodstream um, because it's all connected. I mean, the teeth are connected to right. everywhere. Oh, yeah. And that, depending on which tooth, so each tooth in the mouth can be traced to a meridian and, and an organ. So you know that mm-hmm. if you have a specific condition, it's likely that that condition can be found in the patient's mouth on that, on that particular tooth. Like there's a stomach. No way. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? I know that for myself because I went through um, a period of time where there was, I was experiencing a lot of grief Mm -hmm. and so the, the, the lung and the large intestine meridian there there are emotions that are connected to all the meridians as well. So um, the emotions for the lung and large intestine meridians is grief. So I developed like abscesses in my mouth, all the ones that I had to have removed, they were all on the large intestine lung meridians. Wow. Oh my gosh. It's very common. So, um, but the, the cool thing is that the ear is a microcosm of the body. You can find all the same points on the ear, organs, meridians, everything, and you can treat the teeth that way. But there are also other things that you, that you can do. You can treat the teeth on the ear um, with needles and electricity. And which doesn't hurt. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I saw that on your Instagram page. And that was one of my questions. I was like, what are those wires? (laughs) So it's pretty, um, it's pretty amazing. Actually, I was at this course in the fall and this patient presented this particular condition and they were able to narrow it down to a tooth, which he found the point on the ear and he placed a small needle. It's called an intradermal needle. And it just, it stays, it stays in for a little while. And the patient's back pain went away right away. So wow. it was made because it's all, you know, connected to the muscular system, the organs. Yeah. So I thought that was, that was pretty cool. But there are, um, you know, if you awesome. do have issues and I'm starting to recommend this to my patients is, is to look in their mouth, what, what teeth have, amalgam fillings, then you have, yeah. then you're also introducing mercury into the body, which is very toxic. So there are certain things that you should do is like taking the mercury out. Um, there are certain other therapies that you can do to help clear up those infections. Isn't that crazy? It is. That it's is so, so insane. <laughs> um, even if you've had wisdom teeth removed, it can develop like a cavitation under the surface and bacteria can stay in there and also cause problems. So there are also things that you can do with that. I mean, nothing's not fixable. So you talked about grief a second ago. And so when I think of acupuncture, I think of like physical body organs that you're Mm -hmm. treating, but what about mental health and things like anxiety, things like that? It's excellent for depression, anxiety. I mean, there are so many things that you can do that um, I, I know certain protocols. And actually, I had a patient last week who I gave her treatment. She's like, I don't know what happened, but I just started crying. It wasn't bad. But I, yeah. you know, the tears just started streaming. So yeah, those those things can be treated very effectively with acupuncture. Wow. So when you're first starting your acupuncture journey, would you want a patient to come in and kind of say like, I'm struggling with X, Y, and Z to help guide you to find those answers? Or like, how would you begin that conversation with a patient and acupuncturist to, to both guide them to a fruitful journey? Like if I went in and I, I'm a very anxious person, should I like disclose that to yeah, my yeah. acupuncturist? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, because that, it's not just anxiety. It affects your whole person, yeah. your whole, you know, your heart rate increases, your breathing gets shallow, you're not getting enough oxygen. So mm-hmm. that uh, it's not just a mental issue. I mean, yeah. it, it affects the, the rest of you and your relationships and everything like that too. And yeah. how you go out in the world. So, um, 
yeah, you should, you should just. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And on the hesitancy, how would you like explain to someone the benefits or convince them to come and get, just try it out, you know? That's, that's all you can do, Caroline. You can just say, <laughs> just come, just come once. Cause a lot of people think, oh, if I start acupuncture, I'm going to have to do it for the rest of my life, which is not. Mm-hmm. So basically, you know, if, if they want to just come in and try it one time just to see how, you know, to experience it for themselves, that's probably the best way. Then they can see, you know, they, they can notice changes right away. So that, that's what I tell people. If you want to just come in, try it one time, see how it does. And then if you get positive results, let's tackle your issues here because a lot of a lot of people think that um, if they've had acupuncture once or twice and they don't get the results they want, it's like, oh, acupuncture doesn't work. And, and it's cumulative too. So if somebody has an issue and they've had it for a long time, it's going to take more than one treatment for it to go away. So I try to tell people it's uh, when they start out, it's good to come you know, at least twice a week for a month. And then we reassess and see how you are. And then we'll come up with another plan. Usually if if the symptom resolves and we're getting to the root of the problem, then what we can do is, you know, just say, okay, come once a week now. Or if it's, if it's, if they feel like they're, they're good. Okay. We'll come once a month or something like that for maintenance. I think one thing too, and I've heard Megan talk about this is that when you, when you do go sit with her and have a session with her, first of all, she's going to try her best to, you know, find a, a treatment plan that works best for you, but she looks at your whole picture. So because of her medical background, and that's what I love about, about you, Megan, is you have that medical experience. She can look at your full medical history and kind of see how your whole body may be affected by something instead of you just going in, well, you know, my knee hurts. Well, that's great. But let's, let's talk about your history a little bit and see what else could be causing that issue. And so I love that Megan takes that like holistic approach. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) The whole approach to, you know, finding you that treatment. And then I love too, like Megan, you were saying, you may have to start out with, you know, frequent visits at first, but your end goal is to treat them so that they can be healthier and better. Yeah. So if you need to only go, you know, once a month or whatever your plan is, you can. Mm-hmm. So that's what I love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love that too. That's awesome. It's very much like, uh, renting a lot of therapy and it's just like you are recommended to start therapy with a frequency that's like, Whoa, in the beginning. And then once you get to that maintenance phase, it's, it's a little bit, it's where you're getting to the healing of the issues yeah. and you're, like you said, right. ma- maintenance which is the goal, I think, mm-hmm. for a lot of people is just maintenance. And yeah. I, also, I, I also like to tell people it's an investment in your health, your well-being. Mm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so if somebody feels like they, they can't afford it or, oh, this is going to be so expensive, well, how much do you spend going to the chiropractor every week? How much mm-hmm. do you spend doing this where... You know, I I feel like acupuncture is more comprehensive and can cover more things than just, you know, some of the other modalities. And Mm -hmm, it really is, it's an investment in your health and well-being. It's your life. Yeah. yeah, Feel good? Do you want to stop having (laughs) pain? Yeah. I mean, so, and I think that just comes from not knowing much about it, not being aware of it. So I'm so grateful that you ladies have asked me to hop on here and get the word out. Oh, absolutely. I, um, it's very interesting to me. I keep saying I'm going to have an acupuncture party at my house and Megan's going to come to treat the family. (laughs) (laughs) No, I love it. I, um, I'm like taking, I took some notes over here on the side because, you know, my husband, he struggles with terrible back issues and we like got a new mattress, new chair and everything like that. I'm like, well, you know, honestly, if it's not working, then why not try a different avenue of right. something? And I just think that anything that's natural, you're not like just covering it up with a medicine or just yeah. like, I don't know. I really love that, that 
avenue of, mm-hmm. of fixing yourself. It's mm-hmm. it's something that resonates me with me more and more as I get older and older that like mm-hmm. there is such validity in natural medicine. It's just, it's insane. Yeah. And in the past few years, I've been using more of electroacupuncture, which if you've been to the chiropractor and they put on the TENS unit, the pads that make your skin, you know, quiver, what uh, I do is eat um, put the needles in and then I attach the, the electrodes to the needle. Mm-hmm. So it's bypassing the skin, which offers a lot of resistance to the TENS pad. So you're getting that electricity where you need it to go. And what it, and I hate using the word electricity, but I don't know. Yeah. What it, <laughs> so I don't, I hope that doesn't scare people, but um, what it does is if, the needle is near a a nerve, the outer covering of the nerve goes to the brain. So you can dial in certain frequencies and you can actually cause the brain to secrete certain neurotransmitters like beta endorphins, which is great for reducing inflammation and and pain relief, serotonin. So somebody that's got depression as an issue, you can increase their serotonin levels. That's what all those drugs, uh, you know, like Prozac and everything. Right. There, there are so many different things. And, and the body's natural painkillers are much stronger than like morphine or any of the drugs. So if people can get past that initial fear of, oh my God, they're going to put electricity and then and, and yeah. pills and electricity. No. <laughs> so if they can get past that, I mean, I still use the same you know, the same width needle. So I'm not using bigger needles. And I just, you know, I monitor it while I'm turning it up. So people mm-hmm. experience like a, a tingling sensation. And, and a lot of people, honestly, they fall asleep on the table. It's really amazing. That is awesome. That is so cool. I'm just like so fascinated right oh, now. Like <laughs> awesome. I, I, it's amazing. I can't say enough about it. <laughs> so we talk on the podcast from time to time about Obviously, we're a makeup podcast, <laughs> but we talk a lot about just beauty standards and what we face as Caroline and I, what we face as women and plus size women at that, mm-hmm. but how the media plays a big role into like what's accepted or what's yeah. the standard of what you should be or what kind of treatment you should see. Mm-hmm. Have you faced those same challenges from the outside, the media on acupuncture and, and, and how have you overcome those challenges? All the things that I've heard or or read about acupuncture, everything's pretty positive about it and supportive. I really think it's, you know, up and coming and it's Mm -hmm. going to become more of a standard than, than not. Um, I think once people experience it and the word gets out there and now doctors are referring it, there are a lot of acupuncturists that work in hospitals now. Oh, wow. In, wow. Ch- in China, they actually perform surgery with just using acupuncture. It's true. Look it up. I can't even wrap my head around what that is. <laughs> That's crazy. That's very, that's wow. wow. I can't even talk. <laughs> so, uh, a couple of, when I was in school, a friend of mine, we were out eating, we had lobster and he bit into the lobster claw and broke his tooth oh, and, no. it, and it went down to the nerve. So he was in excruciating pain. Of course, yeah. it was like a Friday afternoon. And I said, well, let me, let's go over to the clinic. And and the same guy that t- I've been t- taking the classes from, he was there in the clinic that day and he put in like two needles, pain went away instantly. And wow. ate and and took him through the weekend until he could go to his dentist without yeah. being in excruciating pain. He was wow. pain. so it's really you know when you when you see things like that you know it's like wow something something's really yeah here and that makes me hopeful too that there is a lot of positive literature and uh, conversations out there happening about acupuncture just because it it just seems like such a better way to approach yeah. you know health and things so that's actually normally we go down this road and it's very depressing because it's like you get beat up by the media but it sounds like in this yeah. it's actually a really great thing so yeah, that's I don't awesome really have any bad things to say about the media because I really, really haven't heard too much I'm, there's not much bad you can say about it the the main thing I get is like the general public and people you know 
thinking that it's bad because it hurts because it's using needles and oh my god I'm not going to let anybody stick needles in me why would anybody yeah so that kind of feeds on itself so that's that's like a big challenge yeah. I feel like in general, there's this like phobia of needles, which like I, I'm one of those people where like, I'm not going to watch it in my arm doing whatever it's doing, but I just look away and it's whatever. But needles are actually like, they do beneficial things because I know people yeah. like with, with piercing guns they're they'll go get their cartilage completely busted out by a piercing gun in a mall, uh-huh. but actually a needle is the correct way to do that. So it's like mm-hmm. this needle phobia that's just blocking everyone from getting their chi unblocked and stuff. I know. Their energy yeah. corrected. Yeah. <laughs> right. Where's all the tattoo and piercing people? You need to be at Megan. Oh, these guys, these big guys with all the tattoos, and they're like shaking on the table. <laughs> it's like break the ne- break the needle stigma together. There should be right. like a tattoo and un- acupuncturist like right. yeah conjoining. I'm saying mm-hmm. we'll do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Any uh, tattoo artists out there? If you want to partner up with Megan? <laughs> Go see Megan. <laughs> well, I do micro needling too, so that's. Ooh. To, um, I have a pen. It's got like 12 to 12, 14 little tiny needles. So if you put on the hyaluronic acid and then yeah. you go over it with the, with the pen, yes. the hyaluronic acid gets underneath the skin surface and, you know, gets rid of lines, wrinkles. I forgot that you did other treatments other than acupuncture. So what, what other services do you offer? Uh, so what I'm, I'm trying to get started with IV, um, IV therapy, like using just vitamins, like B vitamins. If you look at uh, a Myers cocktail, which has magnesium, vitamin C, B vitamins. I did that when I was in New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's good for boosting the immune system, things like that. I do cupping. Have you guys heard? I saw oh. that on your Instagram, yes, and I've seen that from Michael Phelps, so I knew. Oh, it was yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's cool, and it's not you know, it's not invasive. You just have these either glass or plastic cups. It just creates a suction along the skin surface, and you mm-hmm. can either leave them in place or move them around. It's great for uh, reducing stagnation, sore muscles, mm. things like that, getting circulation to the area, any toxins mm-hmm. that are there. It takes them out. Yeah, people love it. It's like an inverse massage. Gua sha. Have you ever heard of gua sha? Yes, Mm -hmm. I have a gua sha. Yes. You you can not, I mean, a lot of people know it for its facial benefit. Right. But Mm -hmm. you can also use it on the shoulders, on the back, anywhere where you have like sore tight muscles. It helps break things up. Oh, that's awesome. I love that you had the same reaction I did. Like the first time I'm talking with Megan and she's like, I do this, you know, and I'm like, never done that. Never done acupuncture. Never done gua, gua sha. I know that. I know what gua sha. I know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> I use that one because I get like a knot on the, like right here in my jaw. So I love my gua sha. It, it is, I give myself little massages and then I just rub out my little jaw tension knot oh. right here. <laughs> Yeah, it's great. It's great. Yeah. So if someone has questions or they want to um, come see you, how would they contact you? What's the best way? The best way is telephone. It's 865-513-2360. My website is resonanceacupuncture.com and that's R-E-Z-E-N-A-N-C-E, acupuncture.com. I don't think I have any more questions. Thanks for coming on, Megan. I oh, you so of course Left. So informational as always. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was literally well, the second we get off. So I always go and I tell my my girlfriends from college what I uh, what the podcast episode is about this week, and I just know they're gonna eat this one up. So oh. I was like going to go text them, like, guys, you have to listen this week. It's yeah. so good. <laughs> Try it just once. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Try it just once, people. You can do that. As Megan said, be sure to visit her website, resonanceacupuncture.com. She is also on Facebook as Instagram, as Caroline said earlier. So, But if for some reason you can't get there, come to Wake and Make, send us a message. We'll get it to Megan oh, yeah, um, and she can you. connect with you. Bless you. Thank you so much. I'm so great. Thank you, Megan. We so appreciate you. That was awesome. She's very knowledgeable. Like, And she, yeah, I know sick. like other things that I've talked to her with are about and she just, 
Like she, there's so much more than just what we touched on. So like, it's really interesting. I'm interested. She just like sold me. Holy shit. <laughs> like, I think like I mentioned earlier, she talks about how it takes time sometimes to get that treatment plan because it took years yeah. to get your body where it is now. Yeah. So you got to undo all that bad habits that you had along the way. Yeah. But like for someone like my dad, who's dealt with chronic pain, it's like, dad, you're going to Megan on Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> I really want to, I really want to suggest it to Dylan because, and, and, and honestly for myself, because I have been having some health stuff recently, which is why I am super interested in that because walking into a mental health facility and just being prescribed like one of the heaviest mental health drugs that you can get is kind of, it, it's kind of like, okay, are there other options than this? Right. And so it's something that I'm super looking into to explore because I just, there has to be a better way of managing than being on medication for your entire life. Like when I look at the scale of my life, it's like, yeah, maybe for right now, but like, what if I don't want to be on that forever? Right. Yeah. And I think that's a very like valid feeling that lots of people have. I mean, Joey's the same way. Yeah. He's, you know, we haven't really talked about it a whole lot on the podcast, but he has PTSD. Yeah. And there was a time where he was prescribed medication and he's like, well, I don't want to take this forever. Yeah. I don't like this. And yeah. So nix that. But but then like, what do you do after that? And I, yeah. I love that there's other alternatives like acupuncture. Or yeah. Whatever. And I don't want to say that like being on medication is not a completely valid journey for some people. Right. It is for me personally. And I feel like to an extent for Joey, it's because on that level of the Enneagram that we're on, there's like either a trust of systems or a distrust of systems. And I just right. feel like Joey and I, we just don't trust it. And yeah, we don't I trust would agree. big pharma. And like she's saying is like, she's seen that stuff behind the mm -hmm. scenes. And especially, I wouldn't say the medical system in a whole, but big pharma is really terrifying. And yeah. so to know that she sees that and she recognizes that and she is, she's, she's, trained in the ways of alternative medicine and, and has those real results and speaks to them. Yeah. I love that. I'm super interested in it. Yeah. It almost makes me like want to go to her even more just because she has been in, you know, our medicine, mm -hmm. you know, she was a nurse for several, like 30 years, I think is what she said. So yeah. she's seen a lot and I'm sure she saw a lot of great things and, and science yeah. and she would probably agree with me, but it's cool to see that transition into yeah. you know, uh, traditional medicine. So yeah. it's really and cool. I, um, like speaking to that journey of tradi like, jo oh my God. speaking of that journey of tradi like, tra oh my God, why can I not get this sentence out? Okay. <laughs> Megan, <laughs> get to camera. Oh, this time. She's having a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> no, take like as I get older, I am just turning away from those things that seem toxic to put into my body. It's like all of a yeah. sudden I had my birthday this month and I got a big head on my shoulders. And I'm like, I don't know. My body is just speaking to me in a way that's like I need to change some things. Like I've started not drinking caffeine in the morning as much. Like I really lowered my dosage by by trying alternative things that wake me up with vitamins yeah. and minerals and all that stuff. And just what she's saying is like super speaking to my soul. So I'm very excited for people to listen to this episode. <laughs> I'm oh, I love that. I'm glad. Well, you know, depending on how you guys react and if you guys have lots of questions, if we need to bring her back on, we'll bring her back on. <laughs> yeah. I want a live cupping demo is what I want. Ooh. No, the we live electronic demo. That's what I want. Yes. Stick that electron yes. in me. Let's get it. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Please let us know what you think. You can find us at Wake and Make Pod on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you want to reach out to Megan or give us feedback, uh, if we need to have her back on and ask some questions, then you can email us at wakeandmakepod at gmail.com. And as always, you can find our website, merch, stuff like that, um, at wakeandmakepodcast.com. So check us out there too. Check us out. Check us out. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. And as we always say, wham bam. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Have a wonderful day. Beep.